claymation has become somewhat of a broad term for stop motion. And many professionals will tell you this is not the case. Uh, claymation is a subcategory of stop motion. It was coined by the great animator and storyteller Will Vinton, who did the California Raisins, and also the marvelous film The Adventures of Mark Twain, which many are familiar with the uh, horrifying Satan scene. But the whole idea of what Will Vinton intended to say in using claymation as a way to describe his work was to say that everything you see from the puppets to the backgrounds, even the way that the mouths move and whatnot, is done entirely with plasticine modeling clay. Now, we'll get this right out of the way. You cannot use any type of clay for claymation, or for stop motion for that matter. Unless you are trying to make a prop or something in the background that could become a hard surface, something that you would uh, bake, and that's what you do with water-based clays and polymer clays. And with uh, plasticine, it never dries. Now, it can melt, but that's not something you really want to do for animation, or it wouldn't really be any useful to begin with. You want it to basically be at its form that it's packaged in, and to manipulate and turn it into any shape and conform around the puppet so that it could create a body, a face, you can even do things where you can manipulate to create cartoonish effects, and this was something that Will Vinton liked doing. You know, he, he liked having exaggerated, you know, wide mouth, you know, expressions or the eyes going. This was all done with clay and often with smaller, larger pieces, which would then be animated in succession. And this is the part of claymation that can be very time consuming. But the other thing, too, is having to actually build a skull. Now here you can see I have this muscular superhero, and that is the main character Hayata Tsuburaya, a uh, reference to two things I love the most, we'll get into that later. But he, of course, has a muscular body. He has, you know, pronounced chest and arms and everything. And the thing is with claymation, I mean, I could probably pull up some photos and uh, show those, you know, explaining how when I first envisioned him, he had a very toned body, because this, this is the idea that he was just a, a nobody, very thin, lean guy, who then gets these superpowers that an alien gives them after he got killed, and, uh, and getting these powers that enhanced his physique and everything, so when I had that original sculpt done, over time it started to misshape and malform, and there are ways of remedying that because the whole point is when you're working with claymation you are basically manipulating not only the movement but the shape as well so for instance here you know we have the arm and as the arm starts to move in movements you know it will start to split a little bit I kind of want to do this a little extreme here so see that's already went ahead and got out of shape and actually we see some exposed wire, which shows I didn't do that great of a job of coating the armature in tinfoil. Long story short, when you animate, you want to have sculpting tools on hand. Now, all of them have their use and their means, but sometimes I find certain ones work better than others. But the whole point that I'm trying to illustrate here is you can get it back into shape, but as you can see, there's a bit here that didn't quite get back together. So I want to go in here with this tool, I'm right handed, so let me do it like that, and then get it back together like that, smooth it out. But that brings up a more interesting problem. So now we got it all smoothed out, we got fingerprints all over it, and look, even on top of that, I got clay on my fingers, and if I touch his head, there's a chance I'm going to actually get clay, this blue colored clay smearing on his head. There's a couple easy solutions for that. One, simply, is to work with gloves. Now, not just any gloves. These are actually latex-free nitrate gloves. I actually got them at Menards, and you can find them at many other stores as well. And this is a good way to at least smooth it out without getting the fingerprints, if that's something you don't want. There are some people who say they, they do like that, that appearance, 
they want to see that in their claymation. So, you know, it, it's up to you, but that's what I would recommend. But like I said, you always want to have the sculpting tool still on hand to get into all the little crevices and whatnot. So, the other thing too that I think works, especially when you start out with claymation puppets, you know, beginning to film, is to actually work with petroleum jelly. Now, I did talk about this in my tutorial talking about smoothing uh, puppets so that they have a clean appearance. This is definitely one of the best things, but I feel what I didn't mention is that a little goes a long way. You don't want to just totally coat this fella entirely in it because then it has a certain look that then doesn't isn't maintained, especially if you're working with the gloves, the Vaseline will just start to come off and then it, it will look different and then on top of that uh, when you're working with your lighting and whatnot that will actually create a strobing effect as you're moving your hands because now you have light bouncing off the puppet and this is something you'll see in some of my works that I, I it's a learning curve but I'm, I'm starting to get a little better at it so those are at least some of the basics that I feel are worth explaining to make claymation seem palpable the other thing, though, too, that I want to talk about is working with an armature. Now, as a brief example, I have a little piece of wire here to explain. You know, all of our puppets here are made from aluminum, non-galvanized wire, 16 gauge. And uh, I think it is probably one of the best ways to manipulate and control a puppet because you can actually get small increments out of this wire without you know it having to really force it and then bam there goes your animation but the one thing I'm always kind of adamant about is you can theoretically do what sort of clay on wire it can work but the thing is the clay is soft it will move and the wire will start to bleed through so an easy solution is simply tinfoil. All sculptures do this when they make sculptures on wire, and I think it's an easy way to do to make this possible. The only thing I would probably recommend as a possible other safe solution is once you put on your tinfoil, either use electrical tape or duct tape and wrap it around at least the areas where the tinfoil is kind of breaking. Because as you can see with Hayata here, the tinfoil must have started to break, and I just didn't really want to put too much reinforcement because you don't want it to be too tight to where then it's not moving, but I think uh, that that's something I'll have to fix eventually with him, so put you back like that. And another uh, thing though too is what I want to illustrate about claymation is there's never really such thing as 100% claymation in the sense that we don't actually have clay being used entirely for one puppet, and this is a fine example. And uh, nobody's screaming when I do this. Oop. His head is baked polymer clay, Sculpey. Now, real quick, polymer clay is intended to be baked, and so that's why I purchased the Sculpey tan colored clay to give him a sculpted shape and it's actually sculpted over tin foil as well because you don't want to have a solid surface and another thing I want to explain although this doesn't look the greatest to look at but at the bottom here I left an area where the sculpt actually ends and creates sort of like a, a circle and then I fill in that circle with thumbtack and the thumbtack basically will keep the head in position because I used to sometimes just put clay in there just to further reinforce, but it didn't work out. The clay would then end up spilling over or slopping onto the neck area, neck joint area. And so with the thumb tag, it keeps everything in line. And like I said, you just want to make sure that that's hollow right there, as well as hollow enough built around the tinfoil ball that you would wrap the head sculpture around. The hair's still plasticine. And it's because sometimes I like to change his hairdo just to be interesting. But I think this is a unique way of doing things for stop motion. It, it is still clay, but it's baked clay. So now you have a solid surface, and then on top of that, 
Now we were talking about smearing, and so we do have some smearing that has occurred when we get them in focus so you can see. And so an easy solution with that. Now you would want to remove the head separately. And I talked a little bit about this in my clay smoothing, but I didn't talk too much about baking a head and the fact that you do want to actually try your best to get this color off without potentially messing with the clay that's here. So the easy thing is to grab a Q-tip, dip it in rubbing alcohol, and then clean it off that way. Once it's done, then grab a dry Q-tip and then dry it off that way. And if there's anything or like any little bits of the Q-tip cotton swab that goes in there, just go with your hand and get rid of it. But I think this is a good way of basically doing heads and then on top of that, I actually have here a plasticine mouthpiece that can easily be removed. And replaced. So, as you can see, it could be debated whether I'm doing 100% claymation because it's very possible that uh, <laughs> it may not actually be the case, but still. You know, with, with uh, everything that I'm doing here, it's all basically just to get a story going. And as you can see in my video library, I've had a few that have already come to fruition, and I plan on continuing to do more as well as submit work to festivals, hopefully get the attention of agents. You know, the, the most key thing is to just always get your work out there. You know, you, you, you're not going to do any good just making this stuff slapping it on YouTube and calling it a day. You know, I've, I have videos that haven't even peaked over a hundred, you know, and who knows why. Well, I'm not going to try and uh, surmise as to what conspiracy is working against me or whatever. Like, I, I think it's just, you just got to keep getting it out there, share it, talk with professionals. There are plenty of people who are very accessible and easy to talk to. And, and I really um, appreciate harsh criticism because I think sometimes we get too content stop motions at a medium, especially with claymation where it's easy to get comfortable and say, oh look, I did a great job. But you know, we have to sometimes dial back a little bit and then watch it again, less with the mindset of how the animation was done and more about, am I feeling engaged by this? So in talking with other people, you'll get more of that insight, and hopefully you'll you'll understand what, what might be your strengths or your weaknesses. But you know, more times than a few, you'll get a lot of feedback on technicalities. And uh, to quote the great Raymond Chandler, uh, who said of literature that one can learn all the tricks of grammar and learn how to properly write a sentence, a paragraph, and that after learning all that, they may not have a story to tell. And I think the same goes for animation. First and foremost, always worry about your story. And this is something a lot of animators stress too. So no matter, even if your stuff doesn't look phenomenal or doesn't look, you know, fantastic, as far as measuring up to other great stop motion, don't get discouraged by that. If your story can engage people, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if you're shooting at 12 frames per second or 30 or 60 which you shouldn't do anyways, but um, it, it's all about just trying to engage an audience properly so they like your work for being great, and then maybe they'll look at the technicalities and say, well, this is, you know, this was very well done. But I guess that's the other thing, too, is I, I wanted to talk one last thing about the whole key framing of compositing or the chroma key frame of compositing, and how you can potentially take this, which is supposed to be like a very creepy mountain range with a cave entrance, and do this to where then you can have a character actually in the background. Now, the one thing is you want to actually have the sculpture done, and it's another thing where I would say with this, you just wing it. Go, uh, go ahead at it. And then I would say, look at a picture of what might inspire you to do this, and then kind of compare back and forth, and then you can go ahead and put that together using your sculpting tools. Again, very important. 
and because you, you can get some nice grooves and everything but you know with this you especially if you're doing it at this scale you got to be a little more delicate if you're gonna do a more larger scale um, cuz see I'm just working with the clay that I have so it's not a, it's not a matter that I uh, have mountains worth of clay at my disposal to actually uh, make this possible <laughs> But, you know, it, it's one interesting way of really enhancing your claymation. Because I'm going to stress one thing. We we are living in an age of temptation. We have AI art available at our disposal. And I did utilize AI art for some animations that I had done. And I'm going to admit, it was easy and quick to get it all. Anything I wanted, anything I was thinking for the background, I just... Bam! Was getting them cranked out big time, and you know what? I I do regret it because this is better, and people do like the look of it. It really creates this idea of a clay world versus having a clean image in the background that you know just isn't really gonna. It's gonna upset people more that I was using this, and we are living in precarious times now where artists you know are being put into question whether they can be replaced by this so i i don't want to support this program I, but i'm not gonna rip on people that are using ar art for fun either so i i do want to stress that when you're doing these kind of projects it's best to do things on your own or look up free stock images but i really do think using plasticine when using plasticine figures is a much more visually you know palatable uh, technique because it really creates this idea of an organic world all being done in clay and uh, you know the last thing you know I'm gonna talk about is you know so you maybe you're kinda thinking claymation isn't really your thing and you the idea of constantly moving and sculpting and all that is an issue for you well I mean you can potentially get a professionally made puppet and I did have this one made by Ron Cole it's a model of my Hispanic demon Kewa Khan uh, made up it's not real don't google it uh, and he did a great job of doing this but he did let me know that it was something that was not gonna be cheap it was about a thousand dollars it's also made on wire so cuz he we talked about making uh, something out of uh, machined parts sort of like a professionally made armature and he said nah that's gonna <laughs> stretch up the price big time so you could talk with animators and they can potentially come to some kind of agreement with you and make this product for you and it is easier to work with the thing is with this one I did say that I didn't want no pupils or no mouths or replacement heads because I was gonna do sticker pieces and that's something that you'll see as I continue to work with uh, getting this short off the ground, which I'll have to talk about one day. I guess I'll end the, the video talking about that. Is, uh, it takes a while for me to make videos, and uh, on average I think a uh, <laughs> stop motion short can take upwards of about two to three weeks a month if work gets in the way because I actually deliver uh, mail for the United States Postal Service for my day job. That's actually sort of means to an end how I was able to get my wonderful puppet here, which I'll have you lean on here because I don't want you falling over. You know? So sometimes you have to do that too when you're working the animation. You have to think about means to an end, suffer through your day job as much as you can, but it's you gotta think about the end product at the end of the day. And so, with that said, though, I. You know, do think that it's possible for you for anyone to get a puppet like this. It's just you you have to be patient with these people who make these puppets because it does take time. This is not a, a service that they provide 24/7, and giving you feedback and all that may may could be weeks, could be even a month before you see any progress because they have either a day job or they have an animation job that they're working on. So that that's something to keep in mind. But you know. I, I do think uh, what I wanted to stress too is I will probably do more of these videos and kind of like more in a vlog kind of sense but this was sort of an intro you know to kind of explain you know the things that I'm doing with claymation and uh, I, I hope uh, you all will enjoy you know the, the content that I'm continuing to produce I, I definitely recommend feedback but you know if there's anything that you know you just 
give my views videos a watch and let me know what you all think and uh of course you could check any of these links here but uh glad you all tuned in and hopefully we'll see you next time here at blue sentai production